guess what? We went to Costa Rica. Special report. What are you doing? <laughs> That's exactly what you look like with your. <laughs> no, I don't. Sure, sure. Hey, how's it going? So we just got back from Costa Rica three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, and already have been asked several questions about the trip uh, to do. I'm going through the process, uh, and my lovely wife Andrea made it absolutely. Absolutely flawless uh, with the prep work that she did, and we thought, well, you know, let's uh, let's do a quick video for everybody just to kind of see if we can help you guys with the process too when you are going to Costa Rica. All right, so it kind of started like this. Basically, I sent him a, shoot, a quick little message when he was at work and was like, "Hey, babe, just booked round trip tickets to Costa Rica," and the response back was like, "What?" And then the planning really began because obviously we went during the times of COVID, so it's not just normal protocol of booking tickets, getting passports, and getting to go all free willy nilly um, to another country. There's a lot of steps and research that had to be done up front. And the big question that we keep getting asked about was COVID travel insurance. And so when I first started looking into it, it looked like it was going to cost over $1,000 for eight days for the five of us and our family that were going. Did a ton of research on just a whole bunch of different sites, talked to people that traveled there. Luckily, we have a friend who is an ex parte that lives there part of the year. And they recommended us looking at a site called Tarwick International. And so we went on there, researched, and they traditionally don't do travel insurance, but with COVID, they decided to start doing that. And it met all the requirements that we needed for um, to have the COVID insurance to get into Costa Rica. And for eight days for five of us, it cost about $187 only. So a huge savings. It wasn't this giant investment that I thought it was going to be. So that was like kind of number one is getting your traveler's insurance. And then once you have that, as you get closer to your trip, there's a few things that you need to do. So they will send you an email that has a whole bunch of different links in it to print out. And it's um, your visa letter, an ID card that just looks like a normal insurance card almost. That you have to have printed out also so we printed the visa card or the visa letter and the id card out for every single person in our family we each had our own and put those actually inside our passport so they were just really organized that's number two you had to do number three which turned out to be a little bit tricky um 48 hours before the time that your flight lands in costa rica you have to go online um, and print out a health pass form and that form asks you a ton of questions from everything from where are you flying out of, have you been to other countries, what seat are you assigned to on your flight, what airline, your flight number, have you been exposed to COVID, have you had COVID symptoms in the last 14 days, have you traveled to any other countries, have you had a temperature, um, it was a lot of questions a whole bunch more than just those as well that it asked and so I went on 48 hours from when our flight took off because we left on in an, at night and then arrived the next day in the morning in Costa Rica and it like wouldn't let me do it and I kind of got in a panic because I'm all about planning and getting things done ahead of time and so then I kind of was freaking out and realized oh wait it needs to be from when you land so I just had to wait till the next day so 
basically 24 hours from when we took off, but which 48 hours from when we landed. So to, 48 hours uh, before, is that is that a, is there a link? Is that the airline or is it? No, there's a link on, it's on the Costa Rica travel um, ministry, I guess you would say, their website. So if you just Google like. So that's specific Costa, to Costa Rica? Specific to okay. Costa Rica, you had to fill this out. And then you had to print out um, a QR code it gave you for each person that you went through and did this attestation kind of um, health card pass form for. And so I put that along with the visa letter and the ID card in each person's passport. And then when we went to check into our flight um, in Spokane, Washington is where we were flying out of. And I wasn't sure when we were going to have to show those documents because we were going from Spokane to Salt Lake City to LA and then to Costa Rica. So in my mind, I thought we wouldn't have to show those until we were in LA because that's you know was our connecting flight to Costa Rica. But we actually had to show those all when we checked in for our flight in Spokane. And then when we went through security in Spokane as well, the TSA security, we also had to show those then as well. And then once we arrived in Costa Rica, going through customs, we had to show all those documentations again. And um, it was really interesting because when we, I noticed there were other people checking in and they did not have those forms. And Delta Airlines is who we flew with and they were extremely helpful. I saw them pulling people aside and, you know, taking them to show them the website they needed to go through and just kind of walking them through that whole process of the health pass and what they needed. And then even on our flight from LA to Costa Rica, there was an elderly gentleman sitting in front of me that I started talking to. And he said, yeah, he was confused on it and didn't have the travels and travel insurance or the health pass or any of that. And the airlines actually helped him when he went and checked in to get all the documentation that he needed as well, which is great to hear that because it is a little bit of a confusing process. And so really with all that prep work and, you know, just the research and stuff and having everyone's documents in their own passports, so we weren't like flipping through trying to be like, oh, here's yours, here's yours. Um, it just made it a really, really smooth, smooth process. When we checked in, they commented about how organized it was and it was great that we had everything. When we went through customs, it was just super quick and easy. There were no issues. So we, we ran into a snafu right at the tail, tail uh, portion of going into leaving the next day, which is... Uh, uh, our daughter got was sick previously, so she wasn't feeling very good uh, the day before we had left. Oh, the day we left. The day we left. The day we left, and had truly made a, a decision that she was going to stay behind. And this is this is important uh, because of the itinerary. Uh, the airlines were expecting another person in our party, so uh, Andrea had to call and and let them know that she wasn't going to be available and the airline still had it in their system so they were calling for her in, in the uh, terminal in the terminal uh, so that that's one thing that if, if something happens and, and, the, and one of your party isn't able to make it uh, there is a process that you have to go through at least with Delta to make sure there's no confusion on that and secondly when we landed in Costa Rica, as we were going through the terminal, there was a temperature check, uh, x-ray type of machine that was showing your body heat as you were going through, as well as uh, employees that were physically taking your temperature. So if she would have uh, been there with the temperature, that could have been catastrophic to our, our uh, trip as well so you know that is truly something to consider when you're when you're traveling and I'm, I imagine abroad anywhere but that that could be a potential um, uh, delay into what you're doing as well or uh, true you could end up coming back uh, unexpectedly uh, so with that being said that is the most efficient process probably uh would you agree uh to to get to costa rica um and, and again we'll, we'll detail this out um at the end so that uh, you've got the websites and and links to be able to have what you need to go to costa rica okay now let's talk about coming back so you had an amazing trip and it's time to come back to the U.S. A couple things you need to know before you get to go home. You had to get, we had to get a COVID test, negative COVID test proof of in order to board the plane and come home. 
and um, this is a little bit of a stressor for us. We had our itinerary all planned out, did a lot of research online that yes, there was going to be multiple places where you can get testing in the La Fortuna Arenal kind of volcano region. And so we're like, all right, we're going to get the test 48 hours before we fly out because you have to be within that 48 hour window. And when we went to look at the places that had the testing available in La Fortuna Arenal region, they were going to be $200 per person and take 24 to 36 hours to get back. So $200 times four of us, because one of us didn't go. I was like, that is a chunk of change. Um, I had known from my research that in San Jose, a lot of places were offering the rapid COVID test that you get your results back within less than 24 hours, they said at the time, um, for $50. So we made the decision kind of on the fly while we were there to leave um, La Fortuna Arenal region a day early and spend two nights in San Jose because our original plan was that we'd get to San Jose in the evening before we flew out early in the morning. And I just didn't want a chance showing up in San Jose at five, six o'clock in the evening, having to go get COVID tests and then not get them back before our 7 a.m. flight. And so it was, it worked out well. It was a really good decision. Even though we had to pay for an extra night at our lodging in San Jose, we ended up saving money because it just, all four of us get tested for the cost of one test in where we had been. And so in San Jose, it's super easy. There's a couple, um, Hospital Suma and then Clinical Biblica are both privately owned hospitals that were offering the rapid testing for $50 a person. We ended up going to Hospital Suma. Um, we just went in, there was someone there at the front of the hospital. You told me you were there for a COVID test. They walked you over, gave you a number, sat down, waited for your number to be called. We had to show our passports and our flight tickets we had to have printed out as well. So we did, you know, check in ahead of time and then have those with us as well to show. And then we paid all together and we went back to a room and each of us got COVID tested. And within less than one hour, we had all of our results back. They emailed them to us. And so once we had the email um, of our results back, I went to the office um, business center in the hotel we were staying at, printed those out, and then also had to do a uh, for Delta Airlines, they had a special form that they required us to fill out as well. So I printed that out. Many of the same questions. Have you had COVID? Have you had any symptoms? Have you been around anyone with those symptoms? Um, basically just to reassure that, no, I haven't had anything. I feel good and healthy and haven't been exposed. Um, and so I printed that as well. And then once again, I put each of our sort of negative tests and that form required by Delta in our passport. So when we went to leave in the morning, we checked out um, checked in at the airport, they were like, oh wow, you already have this form. They did have a big stack of their forms sitting there, so if you didn't have one, they... So, real quick though, just before uh, we go on, there was another gentleman when we were at the hospital getting a test as well, and when we had mentioned that we were getting ours in a couple hours, he was actually surprised because he had gotten... A, a, a different type a different of one. type of test that was at the same location, only his was... 48 hours or 24? 24. 24. I think his was the RT-PCR antigen and we were getting the rapid antigen test. So when you're doing that, you know, make sure that you're, you're clear on what tests you're getting. I, I'm not sure why there was a big difference on that or why he was getting, wasn't it testing for antibodies or something? There were, yeah, there were two different yeah, tests, I guess. Yeah. And so, so. Uh, you know, when, when he found out that we were getting ours pretty quick, he, he was not as excited <laughs> uh kind of uh, was surprised too so when when you have that option or when you're going to do that uh certainly go for the the rapid as well um especially if you've narrowed your window time to get on to get checked in and, and, and get on the, the plane yes and there were other places that you could get the test in san jose like there was literally a block from our hotel that you could walk to a clinic that was offering testing, but it was 24 hours results and I think it was like 150, so it was more money. So it was worth it for us to drive the 15 minutes because we had a rental car to um, the private hospital to get it for 50 bucks and have it back within an hour. And so once we got to the airport, checked in, they once again looked at our passports, looked at we had the two pieces of documentation, that negative test in their required um, documentation form. And then they put a little blue sticker on our passports. And so then when we went to go through security, mm -hmm they had asked originally for those forms and then they saw the blue sticker on our passport and were like, oh, okay, you already had these checked. So that made it really simple as well. And then once again, before we boarded the plane, we walked through an area and they were doing the temperature checks also 
really that became the standard, I think, when we were in Costa Rica. No matter where we went, um, I was blown away, which is the COVID protocol, in order to go in any of the sodas, to if you had transportation arranged for one of your excursions you were doing, the farmer's market, um, any of the national parks, even the mall, anywhere you went, it was your temperature was checked before you went in, you washed and sanitized your hands before you went in, you wore a mask until you were seated at, seated at your table or in an open area away from other people. Which we, we, we actually had a scare at our hotel that we were staying at because uh, we'd been out and about and the concierge had tested me yeah. and a couple times and, and I set their alarm off and they were actually looking puzzled. I'm not sure if they've had anybody that wasn't able to, to enter the hotel because yeah. his temperature was high yeah. from the heat really. Is so what it was. they, they had tested here and then they went into the neck and, and I was okay then but uh, it was uh, that was a little interesting too on us it was as well what would we do Fortunately, that we didn't have to worry about that. But for you know, for a moment there, it was a, just a just a quick, quick uh, this could this could be this could be troubling. Let, let's just do a quick recap on everything. So headed out of the U.S. Travelers uh, Travelers COVID insurance. So you can get Travelers insurance, but that is not the same as the COVID insurance. You need to get the Travelers COVID insurance, and there's um, certain minimums of coverage that you need for medical, for lodging, hotel, and different things um, in the event that you had COVID and were having to stay in the country. Then you have to print out the visa letter and the ID card for each person in your group that you got the insurance for. You have to go online and do the um, travel health pass form and print that out with the QR code as well. And that is 48 hours before you fly uh, before your flight lands in Costa Rica. Then bring all those documentation with your passport to the airport and you're gonna to need to present that a couple different times as you're flying out and going through just customs and everything. Mm -hmm. And then coming back? And then coming back, you need to get a COVID test 48 hours, actually I think it's 72 hours, I'm sorry, 72 hours before you leave the country. Um, multiple places that you can get them and they range greatly in cost. Once you have that, your test, you need to print out your test results and then uh, another kind of health pass thing for your airline, attesting that you don't have any symptoms and print those out and bring them in your passport as well when you check into your flight and go through customs once again. So there you go. Hopefully that will help you and uh, your world of travel to Costa Rica be able to go over there efficiently and return efficiently. Uh, we're going to have more videos on the itinerary and uh, what we truly had many adventures uh, through there. So that'll be separate, but this was certainly something that Andre had been asked quite a, uh, quite a bit about the whole process. It certainly sounds like several people that you know are going to be heading over there. Yes. Or at the least have bought tickets. <laughs> yeah. You know, with things loosening up right now, it, it's, it's been three weeks and there's already in the States, there's... Uh, things are opening up a lot more, but I imagine it's still going to be pretty stringent when, it, when you're traveling worldwide. It would really surprise me if uh, it, it was, wasn't was still. So I imagine there's, there's going to be quite a few uh, criterias. Yeah, I think COVID travel, you know, um, right now is really, it's fluid as far as the requirements and stuff go. It seems to be changing quite rapidly what the requirements and stuff are. And so, you know, this is just what the requirements were when we went there at the end of April of 2021. And so just make sure that you're checking online, you know, because the travel ministry's website and stuff to see what the current restrictions are because they could be changing. Yeah. So it's May 18th and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see as that. See if we end up back in Costa Rica again? Maybe? Maybe. Until next time. Pura Vida.